In my Christian background, we just seldom talked about sexual wisdom, but we often talked about sexual sin. And when I've tried to think this through, I realize that sexual sin has to be a part of sexual wisdom because the, the Greek word, the idea of sin in, 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 in scripture is that somehow we've missed the mark, that we've missed the mark. And, and, but I can remember in growing up, I just felt like it was God's job to keep me straight and to keep me on the straight and narrow and to punish me somehow enough that I would never make sinful mistakes. And was reading in the book of James where it talked about how desire became evil desire and evil sexual desire, evil desire in general became sin and sin became death. And I'm laughing because I was a pretty neurotic little boy and like all of us made mistakes in my own little boy ways and was just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, how is God going to punish me? But as I became an adult and I really thought it through, I thought sin, missing God's mark, missing what's best. So I tried to think it through better and I realized that every time we did something that was wrong, sinful, something did die. But so often what died was God's best. It wasn't that he, I mean, I grew up in Africa as a missionary kid. I mean, it wasn't that God would strike me with leprosy or, or strike me down with smallpox, which he could have, but it was the idea that when I missed the mark, something died, and so often it is, that is God's best. So I'd like to apply that. What is sexual wisdom? Well, part of sexual wisdom would be trying to think through God-reflective sexuality and to let our sexuality reflect his, his love and his intimacy and his creativity and his unselfishness and his beauty. But I also think of part of sexual wisdom is to realize that all of us will make mistakes and there is forgiveness. So when I look at sexual wisdom, yes, we make mistakes. Yes, those mistakes have consequences, some of which God can't redeem. I mean, he can't take a virus away from us. We have herpes, we'll have herpes for life. But in a broader way, God, regardless of our mistakes, herpes or whatever, regardless of our mistakes, he can still give us a whole healthy sexuality and he can help us step in and restore because I think what we have to realize with sexual wisdom that we aren't the sum of our mistakes, that we're much, much more than that and that God can redeem the mistakes and take what we did wrong and actually use that at times to bring us to an even better place. So sexual wisdom again would include the concept of sin that we could miss the mark and that we really are trying to set good boundaries and good safety rails, guide rails, guidelines that can guide us. But also we're, re we're remembering that we aren't defined by what we do. That's not who we are and God can lift us beyond. And so I, I, I think sexual wisdom has a lot of hope, has a lot of restoration. It's able to take the mistakes and, and start to make wise choices now. A little bit of what we have defined as chastity, that chastity is wise constraints is wisely choosing our behaviors, our thoughts. So sexual wisdom will come from God. It'll come from us understanding mistakes we can make and avoiding those, but it'll also coming, come from us not defining ourselves by our mistakes and being able to appropriate his redemption and his love. Because I think so often when we get into sexual sin or mistakes, it creates such guilt. And there's ways that we wonder if we ever can be whole again. And I would say to you, I, who have listened to so many thousands of hours of stories, would say, I couldn't stay in this job as a Christian sex therapist if I didn't all the time see redemption. I didn't all the time see God imparting sexual wisdom, imparting wisdom to those who have made mistakes, who have made bad choices, who have cheated, making them become whole, making them become chaste, helping them become, having real fidelity and being able to make those wise choices. So we have that ability to define ourselves not by our sexual sin, by our sexual wisdom, and by the loving redemption and restoration that God can bring into each of our lives.